park ranger stands front facing in uniform of a tan flat hat, gray shirt, and green trousers. The ranger stands in a grassy area next to a narrow ditch. Behind the ranger are trees. Hello, my name is Brian Autry. I'm one of the park rangers at Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park. Today, we're standing in the vineyard field. This area was the site of some of the horrific fighting on September the 19th of 1863. This was the far right of the Union line, and it was the location of jo uh, Colonel John T. Wilder's Lightning Brigade. Colonel Wilder, pictured here, seated with dark hair, combed to the side, a full beard, but no mustache, wearing a blue Union officer's coat with two rows of brass buttons down the front. Their job was to protect the Lafette Road by not letting any additional Confederates enter the fight from the south. Previously, Wilder tried to hold the Confederates from crossing the Alexander's Bridge, but eventually lost it due to large numbers of Confederates. So on September the 19th, Wilder found himself on the wood line. You see here behind me, a vineyard field facing the Lafette Road here to the east. It had been a seesaw battle back and forth across the Lafette Road during the day with Colonel Hans Haig's brigade to Wilder's left, penetrating through the woods on the eastern side of the Lafette Road and being, and being pushed back numerous times. Wilder's men helped to repulse the Confederates of Bennings and Robertson's brigades. You must remember that Wilder's men carried the seven-shot Spencer repeating rifle, which allowed Wilder's men to put up a galling array to fire each time the Confederates tried to cross the vineyard field. Along with Wilder was his chief artillerist, Eli Lilly, pictured here with dark hair, a thin mustache wearing a blue Union officer's coat with the top buttons unbuttoned and a white shirt. Does that name ring a bell? I think of Eli Lilly some mornings when I take my medication made by Lilly Pharmaceuticals. Lilly was adding to the devastating fire with his canister, shot being hurled from his cannons. If you don't know what canister is, it's a tin can loaded with 27 inch and a half cast iron balls. That makes the cannon into one large shotgun. Wilder described the scene like this. The rebels entered the field in heavy masses, fully exposed. The mounted infantry kept up a continuous blast of fire upon them. Lily and his battery hurled through them double shotty canister from his 10 pounders at less than 300 yards. The effect was awful. It appeared as though the head of the column was pushed by those behind, but it appeared that they were getting no closer because the head of the column was melting away or sinking into the earth. Many of the Confederates found shelter in the ditch that ran along the field, as you can see here. Lilly pulled two of his cannons up to the head of the, of the ditch and loosed more of the vicious canister rounds. Wilder said, it was a pity to kill men so. I had it in my heart to tell my men to stop for they were falling in heaps. When it was over, Wilder said, you could walk down th this ditch for a 200 yards without ever touching the ground because you were walking on bodies. I truly believe that John T. Wilder didn't have that thought as he was watching this in event in unfold because at that moment it was a time to kill or be killed. I think Wilder had that thought after the battle because he made this statement about two weeks after the battle as he was doing an interview with a newspaper back in Indiana. Wilder was actually very sick at the time of this battle and he went home after for a while. I think a lot about these men that fought on these grounds, but I do think about Eli Lilly quite often. If you look at Lilly as an individual, you will find a man that was dedicated to the good of man. His start in pharmaceuticals was at the Good Samaritan drugstore. He developed so many things that we still use in medicine today. His company was, was one of the first to make insulin and Lilly's company was one of, of the first mass producers of penicillin. So think of how many men were saved during World War II because of this. One of the posters you see about World War II, seen here of an army medic wearing a helmet and uniform with a white band and red cross on his shoulder, attending a wounded soldier lying on the ground in a jungle setting with a caption that reads, thanks to penicillin, he will come home. We are likely not to know how many lives Eli Lilly and his legacy saved. I am confident though, many of the children and grandchildren of the men that fought here were on this portion of the battlefield, September the 19th, 1863.